In the light reactions, plants must absorb solar energy from the sun. The electromagnetic spectrum describes this solar energy in terms of its wavelength and energy. Only visible light can be used for photosynthesis. This is a very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. When visible light is passed through a prism, we can see all of the different colors. Red has the longest wavelength and the lowest amount of energy, while violet has the shortest wavelength and the highest amount of energy. When we look at a plant, we usually just see green, not the entire visible spectrum. The color pigments appear is based on the colors they reflect. The pigments we see in plants absorb the other colors of the spectrum and reflect the green wavelength back to our eyes appearing green. These color pigments are called photopigments. The photopigments are responsible for absorbing the solar energy needed to perform photosynthesis. The main photopigments are called chlorophyll. These are responsible for the green color in plants. The y-axis on this graph is absorption, and the x-axis is the visible light spectrum. The graph shows how much light energy is absorbed at each of the wavelengths for the different photopigments. Chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B both absorb energy in the purple and blue wavelengths and the orange and red wavelengths. Chlorophyll do not absorb the green wavelengths, but instead reflect that color back to our eyes. This is why most leaves are green. But leaves can change colors. In the fall, we often see leaves that are shades of orange, yellow, and red. In autumn, the chlorophyll molecules break down, leaving only the remaining accessory photopigments. One type of accessory photopigments are carotenoids. Carotenoids absorb purple, blue, and green light, but reflect yellow, orange, and red, giving off an orange color to our eyes. It is helpful for plants to have more than one type of photopigment so that they can absorb the full spectrum of visible light to get the most energy from the sun. A photosystem is the photosynthetic unit that absorbs sunlight and generates high energy electrons. The photopigment molecules, like chlorophyll, are located here. First, these photopigments absorb the light from the sun. The energy from the sun is then transferred to electrons. These high energy electrons are excited. They now contain high amounts of potential energy. The electrons do not stay excited for long. When they drop back down to a lower energy, the electrons they give off that excited energy. Some of the energy is lost as heat, but some is transferred to an electron transport chain and used to power these light reactions. The light reactions use two different photosystems, called photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Photosystem 1 was discovered before photosystem 2, so it was named first. However, photosystem 1 actually comes second in the light reactions. We'll see that the electrons are excited in photosystem 2 first, and then in photosystem 1 second. It's backwards. Now we'll walk through the process of the light reaction. This is called the non-cyclic electron pathway. Electrons enter at one end and leave at the other. The first thing that needs to happen is energy input. Photosystem 2 absorbs light energy from the sun. This excites an electron and elevates it to a higher energy level. In the image, the electron is elevated from the worker on the ground to the worker on the scaffold. This represents moving the electron to a higher energy level. When the electron is elevated, it is lost from the chlorophyll in photosystem two. This is unacceptable, and the chlorophyll on the ground needs to replace its electron. The replacement electrons come from water. The electrons are given to photosystem 2. When the water molecule loses its electrons, it also loses hydrogen ions and gets converted into oxygen gas. This is the air that we breathe. Now that the photosystem has replaced its lost electron, we take our focus back to the excited electron. The electron cannot stay at an elevated energy level for very long. The electron is passed on to an electron transport chain. This electron transport chain is located in the thylakoid membrane. The electron transport chain is a series of redox reactions. Each time the electron is transferred, it falls down in energy level a little bit. As the electron loses energy, 
the energy is harnessed to make ATP. The energy released from the electron helps a hydrogen ion move across the membrane. These hydrogens then travel through an enzyme called ATP synthase to make ATP. When the electron has reached the end of the electron transport chain, it has lost most of its energy. The electron is given to photosystem one. The electron will replace electrons that are excited by photosystem one. Now we need more energy. Photosystem one will also get its energy by absorbing sunlight. This excites the electron again, pushing it up to a higher energy level. After being excited out of photosystem one, the electron is used to reduce NADP plus to NADPH. This means the electron is transferred to the electron shuttle called NADP plus. When it gains the electron, it also gains a hydrogen and becomes NADPH. This is a temporary holding place for the electron in the stroma. Now let's go through the entire process of the light reaction in the thylakoid membrane. First, the light from the sun excites an electron in photosystem two. When the electron is excited, it needs to be replaced. A replacement electron is taken from water, which turns water into oxygen gas. The excited electron is passed down an electron transport chain in the thylakoid membrane. As the electron is passed, it releases energy that allows hydrogen to move across the membrane into the thylakoid space. This buildup of hydrogen in the thylakoid space powers the enzyme ATP synthase. ATP synthase makes ATP, which will be used later in the Calvin cycle. By the end of the electron transport chain, the electron is no longer excited. The electron is passed to photosystem one. In photosystem one, the solar energy is absorbed again, and the electron gets excited again. This time the electron is passed to an electron shuttle, NADPH. NADPH will hold the electron and bring it over to the Calvin cycle. Now we're done with the light reactions. The light energy has been used to turn water into oxygen and to produce NADPH and ATP for the Calvin cycle.